What's up everybody, this is Blister with Less Than Epic coming at you with another classic WoW video. And today it's finally time to talk about it. We touched on it last week, but here we are. We're breaking it down, professions. And today we're gonna talk about blacksmithing. So blacksmithing, is it really worth it? Are you gonna be able to make your money back? Is it worth putting all this time and effort into level up to get to end game with all the recipes and everything so that way you can make stuff, sell it on the auction house, make money, be happy, pay for your pots, pay for your flash, pay for everything that you're gonna need for raiding, your enchants, everything, pay for PVPing. Is it gonna need is it gonna fill your needs when you get to end game? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So to level up blacksmithing, the rumors are very true. It is very 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 money intensive you are going to spend a lot of gold if you're not farming these mats yourselves to level it up and even if you are farming a lot of the materials while you're leveling up you're still going to struggle to make sure that you have all the materials you need to level it up all the way to 300 while you're just leveling out in the world that being said if you do want to go ahead with blacksmithing we're going to talk about it a little bit. We're going to talk about later in the video some things that you can do to make some of that money back. And if you do end up farming everything, how you can actually make even more gold while you're leveling this up. We're not here to bore you with the entire leveling process of going from level 1 all the way up to level 300. But if you do want a more detailed guide on how to do that, make sure you check down below in the description for a link to the, what I could find was the best leveling guide on how to get from 1 to 300. The obvious little bits are for any major city you can get your apprentice and your journeyman training. If you're looking for your expert training you're going to need to go to Orgrimmar for the Horde and you're going to have to go to Ironforge for the Alliance. And the artisan training is going to be from Breck Keencraft of Booty Bay and Stranglethorn. One of the cooler things about blacksmithing and this is something that a lot of professions had back in classic was your specializations once you reach level 40 or higher and you have blacksmithing at 200 or higher you can actually decide to go into weapon smithing or into armor smithing before you go ahead and level up use that guide from 1 to 300 you're going to want to make sure that you know if you're going to want to pick up weapon smithing or armor smithing and that's because there's weapons and armor that you're going to have to craft to get unlock those specializations for weapon smithing, you're going to need to have four Moonsteel Broadsword, which is a recipe from a vendor, four Massive Iron Axe, which is also a vendor recipe, two mith Heavy Mithril Axes, which is from the trainer, and two Big Black Maces, which is also from the, the trainer. Once you do that, you're actually going to have the option with weapon smithing to go into Swordsmith, Axesmith, or Hammersmith. So there's actually an even deeper tree to go into for weapon smithing, but you'll have to get all... 12 of those items to be able to even unlock weapon smithing to go into those subtrees. The cool thing about those subtrees is that you're going to be able to craft very specific weapons, whether it be swords, axes, or maces, with those different smithing specializations. Moving on to armor smithing, you again are going to have another quest to unlock it. Now, this one is a little bit more complex than the weapon smithing yes it does have less items that you're going to have to craft with the 12 compared to only seven but those three recipes that you need to learn to be able to actually unlock the armor smithing are going to be a lot harder to obtain because they come from other quests and they even have pre-quests there's chains so you're going to want to make sure that you're on top of your game when you're actually going for armor smithing and all of these items that i'm about to tell you make sure you can count on these items as you're leveling up your blacksmithing so that way you're not over crafting and you're using as little resources as possible to get to uh, to level 300 blacksmithing so for the quest for armor smithing the first thing you're going to need to craft are four ornate mithril helms that recipe actually comes from a quest for that quest you're going to need to obtain two mithril coifs which actually comes from a quest where you have to turn in some citrine and mithril bar and then you're also going to have to make a ornate mithril shoulder. That luckily comes from a vendor where you can just buy the recipe. To even unlock the quest to get the ornate mithril helms recipe, you actually have a pre-quest. It's actually a rather long quest chain that you have to do. 
But from what I could find, the only other blacksmithing items that you're going to have to make, which again, you should factor into what you're making to get all the way up to level 300, is you're going to have to make four steel plate helms and four steel breastplates. Luckily, both of those come from the trainer, so you're not going to have to do any more digging. Once you are able to train them, you can go ahead and start crafting them, get them ready for the pre-quest, and then go ahead and make sure you go do that whole quest chain to be able to make the ornate mithril helms. The next items on this quest are the two ornate mithril boots. These also come from a quest. It's a little bit easier than the mithril helms because you don't have to do a pre-quest just to get the quest to get the recipe. Uh, it's a, a lot of digging to figure out what you need to actually do. But what you actually need to make for the quest that gives you the recipe for the ornate mithril boots is you're going to have to turn in two heavy mithril boots. That recipe is from a trainer and then you're going to have to make one ornate mithril pants and that actually comes from a quest where you have to turn in some iron and mithril bars. And the last item on the armorsmith quest is one ornate mithril breastplate. Now this one also comes from a quest, it's very similar to the boots. You're going to have to turn in two heavy mithril breastplate and you're going to have to turn in one ornate mithril glove. The breastplate comes from the trainer and the gloves come from a quest where you have to turn in some mithril and true silver bars. One of the cool things about armor smithing is you, you're not going to get those different specializations within armor smithing kind of like what uh, weapon smithing has, but armor smithing is going to let you actually get these random world drops from raids where you get the top half and the bottom half of volumes one through three of armor smithing and it actually unlocks other items. So along with random recipe drops and drops from reputations and things like that, you have these really cool bottom and top half pieces of your armor smithing kit that you can go out into the world and farm for. They're not really something that everybody needs to have but it's just a really cool feature that they that is in classic that we can look forward to especially if you decide to pick up blacksmithing now let's get on to the gold making how can you actually make gold with blacksmithing at cap well there's a couple ways there's always going to be leveling items that you can craft that are in that niche spot where they're good for twinking or they're really good for leveling or even some are required for quests. So be on the lookout for stuff like that. I'm only gonna give you guys one item here because I don't wanna spoil all your fun of going and figuring out the markets for yourself. But the Pearl Handled Dagger. It's a level 18 or 19 dagger and it's pretty good for level 19 twink rogues. So a lot of people will actually purchase that for three to four gold a pop. So it's a pretty easy way to make a low, low level item for leveling up or I guess this really isn't leveling but more for twinking. There's also going to be profession items that you can actually craft with blacksmithing. Because blacksmithing is so expensive to get all the way up to cap, there's not going to be a hundred people on your server with cap blacksmithing with every single recipe. And because of that, you're gonna there's going to be a need for some other profession items. One of the things that blacksmiths make that is needed by other professions are the rods that enchanters use to make their runed wads for enchanting. So you could easily make some money by just crafting these and throwing them up on the auction house. You're not gonna make a boatload of money off of the lower level stuff, but you will actually be able to make some of the higher, like the true silver rod, you could probably make some decent money there. Uh, the golden rod is actually a pretty good example of something that you can make a decent living with because not only is it needed by enchanters, but it's also needed for a quest. So that was what I was saying. Look for items that are gonna be needed for quests, profession items, stuff like that. All really good options for making money at endgame with blacksmithing. Now obviously the one thing that everybody thinks about when they think about making money at endgame with the profession are what weapons and armor can I make or even consumables can I make at endgame to actually really up the amount of gold that I have in my bags every day without having to do a lot of work. There are some ways to do that. There are recipes that drop in the open world. There are reputation patterns, there's quest patterns. There's a whole bunch of different patterns that you can get that are rare patterns that people will pay you for you to craft them. A couple examples of that would be the Arcanite Reaper, the Lionheart Helm, the Titanic Leggings, Nightfall, the Sulphuron Hammer, some of the resistance gears like the Icebane set. All of that can make you a lot of money. But 
I would not suggest crafting them and throwing them up on the auction house. Maybe crafting one or two here and there, if you have the mats as you're farming out in the world, yeah, go ahead and craft that and throw it up on the auction house. But for the most part, what you wanna do, the best way to make money, especially if you get some of these patterns early on in Classic, sit in your capital city and just spam trade chat saying that you're gonna you're selling you're you'll make that item for 50 gold say want to sell arcanite reaper your mats 50 gold not hard to do and there's going to be a lot of people overpaying for that especially at the beginning when there's not that many people that have it considering that there's going to be a lot of hardcore people looking for that best in slot pre-raid gear so that way they can get into the raids and be as efficient as possible. As the expansion moves on, you're gonna be able to make less and less gold with that, but just remember that blacksmithing is not going to have a super high population of players who are using it because it's so expensive to level up. So if you're able to get it up quick at the very beginning of Classic, you could mark you could put yourself in a very good position to own a percentage of the blacksmithing market and you'll make you can make a lot of money it would take effort and time you're gonna have to be doing some farming you're gonna have to be doing some dungeons some raids to try and get all these rare patterns you're gonna have to go into a lot of quests to get some of these reputation patterns too but in the end if you're looking to make a lot of money with blacksmithing that's what you're gonna have to do so that's all I got for you guys today. I, I want, want to know from you guys, is this this kind of stuff, stuff that you're you're interested in seeing? Is it in-depth enough? Is it not in-depth enough? Let me, if there's something you would want to have learned more about blacksmithing from this, let me know down in the comments so that way we can make these kind of videos even better for you in the future. Okay, guys? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, it's Ratted here. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. We put out multiple new videos each week and we appreciate all of your support. Thanks for watching everyone and cheers.